sometimes okay. uh, you know you're doing your best in bhakti as far as you know your uh, understanding goes and you know you're really trying to put your sincere best in the process but somewhere you know there are moments where you feel still emptiness in your heart mm-hmm. you yes. feel that your heart is not that nourished and especially there are moments where you can really feel this so first thing is what does it signify what does it signify what does it mean and uh, how do we address this yeah well it could mean a lot of things it could mean a spiritual deficiency but it can mean a material deficiency it can mean an existential dis- the deficiency like it's just i just don't have enough friends you know i'm in a temple with with a small number of devotees and i don't relate to any of them and and i've always been extroverted you know so it could be something you know more obvious like that um it could be something deeper like a need that's not being fulfilled one of the six human needs that's not being fulfilled in a particular environment um you know i i don't feel secure here i i you know i kind of feel like i don't i don't know the future of this temple is there going to be an ashram here or if i'm going to be able to stay in the ashram what if they find out you know i used to be an alcoholic before i was a devotee you know they're going to kick me out you know it could it could be so many things of needs not being fulfilled or it it can be a dysfunction on your part i don't get enough recognition here and i feel an emptiness because i need recognition you know you know uh, so it's it's really something you have to look at yourself i think spiritual emptiness is more obvious like my rounds have been not been good for the last few months i feel empty or i haven't been reading for the last few months i feel empty i think those things are a little easier to notice but it also can be service you know so let's say by nature you are a teacher and a writer and now you have to manage you might feel very empty because you're not you're not getting to act according to your nature and that's some of my say well shouldn't we do whatever we're asked and the answer is yes but not in a way that it brings you to this point where you're so empty you can't even do that service well so at that point you might just tell your authorities to say you know by doing this service i realized that if i don't teach i feel really empty or i realize that by managing it just makes me feel empty even though i do teach yeah. so as you know you're all going to have to reflect on what it might be and it can be a combination of all of those it can be um ashram also i'm in the wrong ashram what like when you're something funny is well funny it's just well, it's kind of funny the problem is you know a lot of times we focus on what's causing the emptiness and then it gets worse so that that we have to be careful of that. It goes back to the first point I made. You don't want to be in a consciousness and have stories that foster your problem. Why do you feel empty? But because my temple president left and the good temple president this new one he doesn't understand me. Okay, that's true, but that story doesn't help you. It just makes you feel more empty, right? So then you think, well, what can how can I deal with that? Well, I think I'm going to need I've always wanted to do this or learn this these verses or do this service. I think I'm going to need to do that and focus on that because if I focus on this it's going to disturb me. So so part of the answer to your question is when you can't do anything then you have to figure out okay how will you how will you deal with what you can't change? You know, your best friend betrayed you. Now it already happened it's past tense. How are you going to process it? Are you going to blame him the rest of your life or are you are you going to take it in some other way? correct yeah so that emptiness can come from meditating on something that you don't like and not being able to pull your mind off it <laughs>